The wider and taller your high tunnel hoop house or greenhouse is, the more exposed it is to wind. So it's very important you include purlins and more of them, the wider and taller you get. In this video, we're gonna cover specifically installing side purlins. But before you do that, you should definitely install your center peak purlin first. If you need help figuring out how to do that, you can check out the video link in the description for that process. Once your center purlin has been installed, you can now install your side purlins. Typically, these are installed symmetrically. So if you have one center purlin, you then have one side purlin to the left of it and one side purlin to the right of it. Or two purlins to the left of your center one and two purlins to the right of your center one. If you bought a DIY kit from us at Tunnel Vision Hoops, it'll be clearly marked how many purlins you have on your invoice or your packing slip. Additionally, all of our bows come pre-marked with where the purlins go. The tools you'll need to complete this task are a 1 half inch deep well socket, a 7 16th inch deep well socket, a drill driver, a socket wrench or impact driver, and a ladder. And for the material, I'll have links in the description for where you can find it. Before beginning, I like to lay out all the purlins and purlin hardware to make sure I have what I need. Then I locate a piece with a pressed and flattened end. This is where our purlin will begin. Find one of the pieces that has a swage at the opposite end. It is important that you start with a piece that has a swage on its end. Side purlins run beneath all of the bows and our pieces will start with a brace band. So here we are, we have a brace band put on the bow. We're gonna line the hole in our pressed purlin up with the hole in the brace band. We push the bolt downward so that it's facing the ground. Then we thumb tighten the nut on the underside of the purlin. Here's a close up of a thumb tightened nut on the bottom side of that purlin. Line your brace band up with where you want your purlin to be located. Tighten the nut with a 1 half inch deep well socket. Since Darion's doing this side purlin by himself, he's going to tighten the end of the purlin with an impact driver first so he can lift up the other end of the purlin into place, which is what he's getting in place right now. Every place Darion meets contact with the bow, he'll throw a cross connector on. Here's what a finished cross connector looks like once it's been installed. You'll need a 7 16 inch deep well socket uh, and a socket wrench or an impact driver to tighten these down. The first step is to push the cross connector halves downward from over top of the bow and onto the purl and beneath it. Next, grab two bolts and push them through the holes on the cross connector half. Have the bolts facing down toward the earth if they're on an angle. You don't want them to snag the greenhouse plastic when you put it on your structure. Next, move the other half of your cross connector up to the bolts you just put on. You'll now thumb tighten nuts on the other side. Do this for both of the bolts. After you've thumb tightened your nuts on, make any final adjustments to the location of your purlin. Use a socket wrench or impact driver and tighten with a 7 16 inch drive deep well socket. And this is what a finished cross connector will look like once it's been installed. Continue to install cross connectors wherever the purlin meets a bow until you're ready to install your next piece of purlin. Slide the next piece of purlin over the swage on the purlin piece you just installed. And yes, I am using a center purlin to demonstrate the connection of two purlin pieces, but the method remains the same for sliding the purlin piece over the swage of the previous unit. The only difference will be your purlins will be on the underside of the bows. Drive two 3 8 inch drive by one inch tech screws through the purlin piece and into the swage beneath it. It's important to have screws on the underside of the purlin so that it doesn't make contact with the plastic in a later step. Continue installing cross connectors and connecting pieces of purlin until you get to your last piece. So here we are taking that last piece back up, inserting it onto the swage, and we're going to line up the brace band with the purlin. Drop the bolt in through the hole, throw the nut on beneath it, line it up with that center mark, and then hit it with an impact wrench or socket. Now we're going to drive two 3 8 inch drive screws to permanently hold it to the swage beneath it. If your last purlin piece doesn't fit perfectly and it's a little long, you're going to have to follow these steps before you install it. We're going to make this purlin piece fit by trimming off of this end. To do this, we're going to take note of where the purlin piece passes the end bow. We'll make a mark with a marker. And we won't be cutting off of this flattened end. Instead, we're going to use it to get a measurement. Here it's a half inch or so. We'll use this measurement on the other end by flipping this piece around, measuring and making a mark at that same distance that we just measured. Once we make a mark, we can line it up and cut it with a reciprocating saw or a hacksaw. If the edges are rough, use a metal file to hit the spurs before you put it up there. And then you could finally put up that last piece of purlin and get it all pinned in as we just showed you. 
Hopefully you found this video helpful as you worked to install your side purlins. If you have any questions on this process, please leave a comment. And if you found this video helpful or you want to watch more season extension videos, consider subscribing to our channel. And if you're interested in any of the materials used while making this video, I'll have links in the description for where you can find them. Thanks for watching.